Chances are, you've probably seen rear projection in films, even if you didn't know it. It's a filmmaking technique that's largely unfamiliar because it's rarely given much attention these days. Unlike some other flashier filmmaking techniques, rear projection is designed to be invisible, used in the pursuit of naturalism, even though the technique itself is highly unnatural. The process combines sets and actors in the foreground with background action that was filmed separately at a different time and location. The foreground action is filmed in front of a screen and the previously recorded background imagery is projected in reverse onto that screen. The whole thing is then shot together to produce the final image. This creates the illusion that characters are in a place they are not in. When rear projection was first used in the 1930s, it allowed filmmakers to circumvent the technological limitations of cameras and sound recording at that time. In other words, it made shots that had previously been impossible, possible. The long-standing question of how do you show someone driving and talking in a car had finally been answered. Movies used the process constantly for driving scenes because it made it so easy to record dialogue while outside or moving in a car, especially film noirs. By the 40s and 50s, rear screen projection had proved to be so effective and efficient that it became standard practice in the Hollywood studio machine. Alfred Hitchcock used rear projection to expand the world in his films and visualize elaborate sets or grand locations that would have been impossible without the technique. Today, the technique is seen as old-fashioned and anachronistic because it's no longer technically necessary or even that convenient. While it was once a convincing imitation of reality, rear projection is no longer considered the best technique for achieving naturalism. Viewers have gotten better at spotting anything artificial, so the effect now appears visually jarring because the foreground and background tend to look starkly separate, creating spatial discontinuity. When it's used in films today, it's largely an artistic decision made by the director wishing to achieve a postmodern effect rather than just to cut costs. Directors like Quentin Tarantino and Lars von Trier use the effect in a highly self-conscious way. They're aware of the fact that process backgrounds have come to remind viewers of old Hollywood because they look defective and not real to contemporary viewers, so they can use the technique intentionally to trigger this reaction. In this way, rear projection has transformed from a practical necessity into simply another expressive tool for directors.